Hello world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to RoboThought Zero to Hero series C, C++ coding in Arduino Mega, Arduino UNO, Arduino Nano or any of the Arduinos you may use for the C programming lessons. Guys, we are on lesson number 47 and in this lesson I am going to talk about motion sensors. In the previous lessons we spoke, I showed you how to work with ultrasonic sensors. Now in this lesson, we will talk about motion sensors. So how does a motion sensor look like? So let me show you quickly my circuit which I put together so that you will understand where we are leading to in this particular video. So take a look at it. We are talking about a simple motion sensor like this. It, it's a pretty pretty much a standard uh, motion sensor which is used uh, in various types of IoT applications, robotics and different kind of electronic projects which is pretty much easy to integrate with uh, uh, with, with Arduino and Raspberry Pi and, and uh, you know any of the single board computers like Jetson Nano uh, uh, and you know multiple other boards like ESP32, Node MCU and stuff like that. So guys in this lesson, I will explain the principles of motion sensor, all right, and its applications and show you how to connect, configure and write some basic C, C++ code to make it work, make this motion sensor work with Arduino, okay. This particular sensor has got tons of robotics application. If you connect this with your ultrasonic sensor and the motion sensor, imagine guys, we can trigger multiple detections, different kind of detection. If a human being is walking in front of your bot, you can make him to follow or make him reverse back. Similar way, there are many other projects we can make. We will get into that slowly and steadily one at a time. All right. So we will use the PIR motion sensor in this particular project. It's called PIR sensor. So all objects having a temperature higher than an absolute zero, anything above zero, which will emit radiations from the generated heat. Okay. These radiations cannot be detected by human eyes. We just cannot see this, those radiations. Hence, this kind of sensor devices such as such as the PIR sensors are used for detection of various types of motions either from humans or, or a dog or any other objects coming and going in front of your uh, uh, you know in front of your project or your build or your robot right so what is a PIR sensor so it, it's called passive infrared sensor or a PIR sensor that detects the motion or movement of an object that detects basically the infrared radiations emitting out of that such as a human body we have a natural uh, radiations right hence the use of this particular sensor is very very much common so let me show you some basic structure of what this sensor is all about and the pinout drawing above me so basically we have a VCC pin which you know which, which connects to your 5 wall there are only 3 pins and the ground pin connects to the ground and there is a digital output pin that is the middle pin uh, you can you can see the pin out layout above me in this particular drawing. So we will basically connect the VCC terminal of the sensor to the 5 wall uh, and, the, and the PIR sensor output can, can be connected to any of the digital pin right any of the digital pins it doesn't matter. Uh, unless until as far as your code your C code is matching to the perfect pin where you plugged in so it doesn't matter which digital pin you connect okay so the applications of PIR sensor uh, this particular sensor uh, you know you can use it in the security systems in robotics and automation IOD projects you know such 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 sensors work really great in detecting the entrance of any object including a human being okay and in a given area so the detection range of a PIR sensor is between 5 meter to 12 meter so that is how it works so that th this is the, the 12 meter is the maximum value of the output you can detect in a specified range within, within 5 and 12 all right guys so basically let's let, let's also take a look at you know how what are the principles how it works so if you see this particular drawing which i put together 
you can you know the the working of the PIR sensor is, it basically depends upon the detecting the IR that is the infrared radiation which are either emitted or reflected back by the objects the infrared radiations are detected by the crystalline material present on the center of the sensor it's a it's a small crystalline material okay considering a person passing in front of the background like a wall right the temperature changes from the room to the body temperature and vice versa different ways within the sensor field that is 5 to 12 meters okay uh, the changes arising in the arrival infrared radiations are then converted by the sensor to the output voltage it let and then later detects the human body or any other object which passes by let's also take a look at how this particular structure works so let me show you the pin out drawing the, the this particular drawing shows the pin out as you have seen sorry uh, this one you had seen the pin out like the 5 volt and the ground and you know the the control potentiometer for the time delay and kind of thing uh, at the reverse of the sensor there are this is the entire circuit layout where you can see multiple components plugged in the round metal can be is basically mounted on the center with a rectangle crystal that detects the IR radiation okay the ball kind of lens which I showed you in the video just now I'm, I'm going to show it to you again the white color ball that presents on some of the sensor which helps in enhancing the viewing angle like this like you know 30 degree to 45 degrees like this the bottom part of the sensor contains many of the circuits many components like as you can see in this picture uh, so the movement of a jumper presence on the sensor on the L side the left side will cause a change in the state of the sensor whenever the motion is detected such a condition is defined as a single trigger mode you need to make a note of it it's a single trigger mode when the sensor resets the timer after every detection of the motion it is then defined as repeated trigger mode okay that also can be adjusted now in this in this particular picture uh, the circuit architecture you can see there are two small potentiometer the orange one the two potentiometer basically present on the sensor are called the sensitivity potentiometer and time potentiometer so one potentiometer it's nothing but a variable sensor you can adjust the sensitivity and the time potentiometer you can adjust the delay time right so that's how you can do the fine tuning depending upon the project what you are building if you, you know it depends upon what kind of environment you want to detect between 5 meter to 12 meter range so we can also adjust both the parameters time and sensitivity accordingly all right and of course we need to write the code according to the parameters which you are setting so it should be restricted for at least 15 seconds in front of the PIR sensor for proper calibration in the output what you get after 15 seconds the sensor can easily detect the movements okay so if any movement is detected the LED will glow high which is what we are going to do in this particular lesson the project we will just simply trigger a LED and if there is no such movement the output will be low so the LED will be off right so let's let's look at the circuit what we are going to plug in today it's a pretty basic circuit guys so you know you you just have to connect the VCC terminal of the PIR sensor to the 5, 5 volt of Arduino and the output terminal of the PIR sensor which is the middle sensor the middle pin to pin number 8 digital pin 8 you you may use 13 12 10 whichever you want but I have used in this particular lesson for this particular video I used pin number 8 of Arduino UNO now connect the ground terminal pin to the ground pin and connect the positive leg of the LED in series with about 200 to 220 ohms or 330 ohms resistor to pin number 13 okay and then connect the negative terminal of the LED to the ground pin of Arduino all right guys let's do some coding and let's see how it works let's let's open up my Arduino IDE and that is my IDE let's do some coding to make this stuff work all right now we need to declare the pin so how do we declare int led pin equals to 13 so this will basically this is your led pin now let's say int my passive infrared P pir pin 
is connected to pin number 8 like this the pin of Arduino is connected to PIR output and then what we need to do we need to declare int the PIR value equals 0 okay so this specifies the status of the PIR sensor and now let's go to the void setup void setup close the function and then open a curly bracket like this uh, right now what we need to do we need to say pin mode pin mode and the happy little color orange pin mode led pin to on that is your output to on and then let's say pin more pin more PIR pin the sensor pin to input I am taking the input from the sensor all right this is your one time setup and then let's let's say let's send the output from the sensor is considered as a input from Arduino so let, let's do the serial print serial dot begin with a standard ball rate of 9600 semicolon now let me come out of the block of code down let me go to the loop wide loop like oops wide loop let me close the function and open a block of code with a curly bracket now in the loop what i need to do let me just scroll it up now in the loop we need to say uh, the pir value pir value equals pir value equals digital d i g i t a l all right digital read there you go the color changes that means it's good there is no spelling mistake and we need to read the pir pin okay once you read the pir pin let's say if if the pir pir value equals equals i remember the previous lessons guys how do we use the double equals to symbol equals equals on that is high then what we need to do we need to uh, uh, basically write on the digital pin so how do we write let me open the block another block and then say digital write digital write oops caps lock digital write oh no digital write like this digital write led pin to on state that is your high state okay and this will basically turn on the led if, the, if any kind of motion is detected right and now let's say serial print serial dot print ln now in a double quote let's let's print anything say for example hello iron man i found you like this and close the double quote and close the parenthesis and then a semicolon do not forget the semicolon guys now let's come out of this block of code now let's say else else you need to do this there is a syntax error else else i am asking my arduino to follow do this say digital write let me just scroll it down digital write uh, 
what I am going to write, I am going to write LED uh, pin, LED pin to off, low. Okay, this will turn off if we have no motion at all. And then let's say serial dot print ln. Oops, uh, my keyboard serial dot print ln now I can say if it is low I can say say hey iron man I cannot find you with a double quote and close parenthesis and a semicolon all right now what we need to do we need to delay this for say 1000 milliseconds delay for 1000 you can increase this as you wish all right guys all right let me close put another parenthesis let's see how many mistakes i have done unless until like compile it's very difficult to find out what mistakes you have done guys it's it's a, sometimes it's tricky you know you without your knowledge you tend to make some basic syntax errors, syntax mistakes and kind of thing. <clears throat> All right, let me just compile it. Looks happy. Oh, what is that? Int PAR, okay, PAR value. There you go, PAR value. Let me compile it. compiling sketch done compiling which is good there is no error let me upload the sketch uploading looks uploading that's good all right i can see my sensor working and i can see the led glowing let me open the terminal hello iron man i found you all right so let me just share the screen with you guys terminal so so here if, if you can see hello iron man i found you the terminal output but my even my led is glowing here so that means I'm, I'm sitting very close by right i'm very close to the sensor remember it takes about 5 meter to 12 meter and if i use a let me just show you so if i for example if i if i adjust the proximity and the time here uh, using the potentiometer i can adjust the motion distance now see you can see the led is on that means there are it's detecting my body temperature because i am sitting next to the, the the sensor itself right so if i i have to get up from my chair and go really far away and uh, also we can just tune it in such a way that even the closest proximity it can detect so or or it can avoid and the led will go go off so if you, if you look at the terminal obviously we are getting the output hello i am man i found you so which is a good sign guys so guys i hope you like this uh, uh, video uh, this particular lesson it's, it's a pretty simple straightforward to plug in and uh, you know uh, build the circuit all you need to do is just follow this drawing and understand how the par sensor works the way i explained you i hope it's pretty simple and then uh, you just plug into uh, you can use any of the digital pins as i showed you and follow the code along so guys do give me a thumbs up and a like and i'm going to get back to you with more number of lessons in this particular series all right guys see you until then goodbye